Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. I would like to uh, welcome all of our participants. And uh, so I would, uh, I'm greeting you today from Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, my name is Jan Zirkel. I am the uh, an and fellow of the uh, Center in Saban University. I am uh, working on the partnerships and uh, the contributions and engagement of civil society. And I would like to uh, thank all uh, parties who have contributed uh, to this organization and as well as all the uh, uh, panelists. I, I, as far as I can see, it's a very broad program, comprehensive program. I would like to congratulate everyone on their efforts. Uh, uh, in 2019, I joined the Maruf organization in Istanbul. It was uh, grand, uh, c colorful, uh, so vivid and live for the people. At the moment, of course, we're doing our best under the COVID conditions. It should be, it's worth praise still in this uh, way, uh, but hopefully we can greet each other in person also in two years time. Uh, so this session uh, will uh, be about youth engagement. We have experts who are uh, very knowledgeable on these fields. I will introduce them all uh, to you. We will n not have a lot of time, but I think we will have the chance to get a, a good impression of their wonderful work in the field. I wanted to underline the fact that the main aim, objective of youth en engagement is uh, to be able to uh, work according to the aspirations and dreams and uh, talents of the youth. So uh, therefore, we wanted to structure this uh, session in the following way. I was going to ask a few questions to the young people in the beginning, but unfortunately, we cannot do that due to technical reasons. But um, uh, you, among the audience, if there are young people in the audience, uh, we still are considering uh, to to have you in the foreground and prioritize you. And you know, there will be a Q&A session at the end of the, the session. So as the youth, I mean under age 30, uh, I wanted to um, give you the word first. Uh, so please state your questions to whom you're addressing the question and your age in the chat. And I want to prioritize the questions of the youth under 30 years of age. So we move on uh, to uh, the uh, speakers. And uh, just a small note to the translators. I'm going to switch to English now. So we will start into the session. That was a bit uh, bumpy. Uh, excuse me for that. Um, but uh, we will now take uh, tours going uh, through our uh, distinguished speakers, um, after which we will have uh, questions and answer sessions. Obviously, you can write those questions in either English uh, or Turkish. Um, and I assume I will have these questions displayed via a chat, uh, but we will see about that. OK, first of all, we will start uh, with uh, Professor Tarkan Oktay. Uh, from Istanbul Medeniyet University. And also he is working uh, at the presidency of the Republic of Turkey, serving as a member on the board uh, of local government policies. And he has quite an impressive CV. I will not go through all of it since we have uh, little time, but I'm very excited to have him on. And uh, Professor Oktay, the floor is yours. Esteemed moderator, esteemed uh, audience, I would like to greet you all with my sincerest feelings. Uh, at the beginning, um, first of all, I would like to um, join wholeheartedly into the comments of our moderator uh, into the organization of the Maruf uh, events. And I would like to uh, congratulate all parties on their sh um, wonderful activities within this regard. I will move on since we have limited time. We have a lot of speakers who are experts in their fields. 
and they will share their activities with us. Before that, though, I uh, would like to focus, uh, underline that uh, the uh, there, there are some framework uh, topics, uh, policy strategies, principles of uh, youth engagements uh, in terms of uh, both local and international uh, organizations. I would like to underline these uh, policies and framework activities. Uh, uh, and then I am also thrilled to listen to the activities based on these frameworks. Uh, of course, the young population has been uh, defined uh, also in terms of age uh, by uh, organizations around the world. So uh, 15 to 24 years of age is accepted as the general target group uh, for youth engagements. There are, of course, some organizations like the World Bank who are actually broadening this uh, uh, age, uh, and also some countries are also preferring uh, different uh, ages for their own purposes. But in general, 15 to 24 years is the overall accepted uh, area, uh, age group for youth, uh, for all programs of youth engagements. We have uh, the here on the screen uh, object objectives for youth for uh, three different world organizations. First of all, UN. Uh, one uh, document that we have uh, chosen is the um, action program uh, for youth. Uh, is one of this as the. Uh, Moderator also pointed out we have both Turkish and English versions on the slides, so it's a little bit um, adverse in terms of the layout of the slide, but we wanted to have both languages there present on the slide. When you look at it, we see here that um, in the in in terms of the fact that uh, for uh, the organizations to focus on and to um, develop their programs of action for um, are um, mostly education, employment, hunger and poverty, health, environment, uh, drug addiction problems, juvenile delinquency, uh, leisure activities, the problems of young girls, participation, which is one of the major issues. I believe we have a presentation on that in itself today. Globalization, global relations, information and communication technologies, um, prevention of certain diseases, especially uh, for youths and children, um, the the local wars and conflicts, which are harming uh, these groups uh, extensively, so and and each country's unique youth-related issues you can see here are among the UN agenda. Another uh, important actor in this area uh, and worldwide is the European Union. And we see that they have adopted similar uh, principles and strategic areas uh, to work on education and training being the first and foremost, employment, entrepreneurship, health and well-being, social inclusion. Of course, the social inclusion uh, concept, um, we'll go to it in detail, but it is becoming more and more significant in international uh, activities and leaving no one behind seems to become the, uh, the common uh, motto. Uh, participation and of course uh, the fact that uh, everyone should have access to opportunities no matter what their demography and their social economic conditions of course and uh, when we say talk about participation we see that it's also important volunteer activities are important innovation and culture is important and youth and the world uh, is uh, among the uh, topics are among the topics uh, with which the European Union uh, works on their um, youth engagement issues. Another international organization is the Islamic Cooperation uh, Agency uh, an organization. We see that their focus areas are quite similar to the other two uh, organizations, education, employment, social inclusion, health, marriage and early marriages, and uh, common youth policy, and uh, reducing extremism. Uh, I'm sorry about that. And um, you see that there are uh, the focus uh, areas uh, that they are active in. 
So when we look at the principles and objectives of these three international organizations, we see that there is a common framework. So uh, to protect young people, uh, instead of this view of protecting them, keeping them from risks, what they are uh, bringing more to the foreground uh, within this common framework is to develop young people and develop young people's relationships with the community. So the new trend has now uh, become, rather than be being passive and being protected, uh, being more in the foreground, more active and more developed in terms of their relationships and capacities. And of course, uh, this also includes the relationships with the community, including political participation, economical participation, social participation. And uh, these are all different aspects to this uh, relationship uh, issue. Another third common framework that we can get out of these principles of these international organizations is to increase the contribution of young people to society as we have uh, uh, emphasized. We see that 16% of the world population is co considered young. In the advanced countries, this is a lower in uh, percentage. In developing countries, uh, this is higher. And uh, most uh, one in six uh, is among the rage. Most we see that uh, the, dynamis, the dynamic structure, this potential, the activity of the youth, especially in developing countries, should be enhanced and uh, supported. And uh, this can be uh, done through a common framework uh, throughout the world. And uh, this is uh, among the common understanding. I would like to give you some main recommendations that we have for youth services, which will be followed by certain strategic objectives and goals. And um, it, for any local administration, local uh, when uh, planning a youth engagement, uh, to be able to uh, help them uh, present these plans uh, more relevant to the youth, they have to make headway on two main areas. One is the youth strategic plan. Uh, you know, planning uh, for strategic governance has become um, more significant in our Turkey uh, in our country as well, together with the world, with the rest of the world. It's very good that they, the local um, uh, governments are also adopting these. But in such sub-areas, sub-topics uh, such as the youth, um, preparing a plan for youth engagement, a strategic plan for youth engagement specifically, is uh, very significant as well. Of course, strategic planning is a uh, is a topic known to all uh, the analysis of the status quo and cooperation with stakeholders for uh, future uh, cooperations as well is significant uh, factors here that need to be taken into consideration. And um, another important uh, topic after this strategic plan is prepared is uh, to have uh, these um, these youth engagement activities turned into a service model by the local governments. And we know that many municipalities are carrying out wonderful work with uh, with the youth, and each and everything that they do is important. However, to be more effective, more uh, efficient, and more sustainable in these activities, we have to turn these into a model. What we mean by model, it's uh, the, um, this is an, uh, actually to, to put it into writing, and, and measurable uh, criteria, performance uh, enhancement and performance measurement. So we need to turn it into uh, a model. And uh, this is also a, a sort of declaration for the stakeholders and a platform for cooperation and for further development. It ensures standardization and also uh, it creates a framework for the same activities to be applied and adopted by other municipalities. And also it is very important in terms of accountability as well. Uh, so in in all this uh, uh, framework, uh, we see that the working uh, or, or turning this into a business model is quite significant for municipalities. We have a few strategy recommendations as well. I want to talk about this as well. One of these strategies is befitting more youth for municipal services 
uh, and uh, this um, means uh, that this is actually um, building the framework for more young people uh, to uh, the, the activities being more relevant to all the youth because the youth is not a homogenic uh, group. Uh, we have different groups, subgroups uh, with um, different sections in terms of um, demographics or socioeconomic structures. And so when municipalities plan youth activities, they have to be aware of these distinctions between the subgroups. And second strategy should be to diversify uh, youth services. So. Uh, but before that, in first strategy, I have to say that uh, there needs to be a broader access for different subgroups of youth for the municipal services. The second strategy, as I said, is to diversify youth services and develop new practices in terms of material culture, technology, social and economic relations. As, as these develop further, you, we need to diversify the existing uh, activities and services and especially uh, add new practices which actually symbolize the youth, their trends, their um, their views and perspectives. So the municipalities need to be uh, very clear, clear about this. So uh, developing the corporate capacity in terms of uh, the youth activities, you have to make use of uh, expertise and make use of physical locations and uh, infrastructure, IT infrastructure. These are uh, very, very important. So developing institutional capacity is very important as strategy three. Strategy four is developing cooperation and coordination with stakeholders in the youth field. This has two aspects. One is to to increase efficiency and efficacy in the services. This is important uh, in terms of relationships with the all the actors. And uh, the other aspect is that, of course, it's not possible for the municipalities to undertake all the burden of all these activities. So developing cooperation is an important uh, strategy. I am just almost done, uh, very little left. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we know that municipalities have youth services that they're proud of already. But we see that in time, these become um, less lustrous and uh, they become uh, more stale and and it's important to keep them uh, alive and shining so improving the municipalities youth services is strategy five and the sixth strategy I can say is improve communication with young people together with developing uh, opportunities this has become more uh, and easier and easier uh, but um, since many municipalities cannot manage this uh, communication Communication can they cannot uh, reach out to the channels and locations of the young people. We see that there are some disruptions in these services. My final slide I have here is strategy seven. Young uh, people need to be more active in service processes. This also again has two aspects to it. So uh, mostly it is the elder people uh, who are designing the activities for the youth. So uh, you know. In the kitchen of the process, the young people should take part from the beginning, from day one, from stage one, uh, so that uh, the uh, youth, which are the target group, uh, should be uh, easier to target. So, And my final strategy, eighth strategy, is supporting the participation of young people in social life and their economic empowerment. I believe one of the presentations will go into detail on this. As well, all of the uh, local governments know that this is uh, important, but what's important, significant here is to uh, establish the mechanisms to be able to ensure this. And we see that uh, engagement activities where the young people are not empowered in terms of their social and economic uh, prowess uh, are not uh, very successful. So we have to support the participation of young people uh, in these uh, activities as well. And I believe this is one of the major factors of this framework. So um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Professor. That was a, a very good foundation for uh, the continued pres presentations. We will now have the following presenters will, will go uh, into practical examples a bit more. 
after you basically laid this groundwork. I will try to be very brief with my introductions now, and I would also ask all presenters to basically uh, stick to their time so we can still have a Q&A at the end. Uh, next up, we will have uh, Melike Chakir. She is a, a measurement and evaluation officer at Koja Eli Metropolitan Municipality, the uh, Department of Youth and Sports Services. And just briefly to introduce her, what I found uh, about her CV was that she has quite a strong background in mathematics. And if we all talk about needing to work more with numbers in social affairs, uh, I think she's very well equipped to do that. And I'm excited to hear her speak. This, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. I would like to extend my gratitude and respect to all of you. My name is Melike Chakur. I work. I'm working in the Kojeli uh, municipality for the last eight years, and I had the chance to work closely with young people, so that's why I'm here. So with the social uh, municipalism uh, principle along with that, uh, social uh, activities and youth activities has become prevalent as well, have become prevalent as well. And as Kojeli municipality, we think that we are one of the pioneers in ap applying these principles in 2015, with the guidance uh, project, we had the award given in this area. And so what is this uh, guidance? What is this guidance model? We, we will, I would like to talk about that and our aims in this area. So with this model, we would like to address the youth's uh, rights to exist, to live, to, and they, also their needs. And also, also we would like to state that we care about those things as well as providing them with the necessary supports and also social um, opportunities. And I think this is kind of a new design model, actually. And guide the guidance model. So the information houses, and also for those uh, high school students uh, in high school, it is a service for them. This is not like the standard uh, private uh, education institutions in Turkey. This is to promote and also support them and their efforts, and also workshop, workshops, uh, family supports, and also public support, etc. Now I would like to show you a few examples. We did a mothers and daughters camp and also fathers and sons camp and robotic coding camps, social responsibility projects and those uh, co collaborations we had with the Ministry of Education and also uh, poll and other question re uh, related and oriented uh, competitions. And we have a writing workshop as well, an author workshop as well. and. This this academy lisa uh, program is targeted for uh, for those who are uh, in high school in Kojeli, and we are actually aiming for international students as well. Uh, and we have 19,800 19, students here, so that they can feel at home in Kojeli as well. And like I said, the youth and international students' uh, body is in, in this body, within this body as well. We are conducting academic readings within these uh, units, and we are providing them with social uh, opportunities for new events and activities. And our e-youth, e-gençlik, uh, unit is kind of new. It holds a lot of new different things, especially in terms of uh, esports. Esports, as you know, has come to prevalence in the recent times. And for those who are uh, really s skillful in this, we are promoting them and supporting them for their tournament efforts and endeavors. And then by creating teams for them to participate in, we are sending them to national or international competitions. And with our technology workshops, uh, for our young engineers and engineers-to-be, we would like to provide them with the necessary logistics, equipments, and technologies so that they can compete nationally and internationally in festivals. And recently, we were in Technofest in rocket construction and rocket design. 
un with unmanned vehicles and unmanned aircrafts our youth participated in such projects and we also had uh, PUBG tournaments and other sports tournaments as well and with our digital content workshops we aim to provide our youth with the necessary tools uh, for them to be able to express and stay existent in social media platforms. And also, we would like to give them a training program, which we are conducting actually with the news and po podcast workshops, so that they can sustain their presences on those, pl on those platforms. And we also have youth camps, we can mention. This is uh, something in which uh, we have in five different areas and we are taking pe uh, young people away from the uh, big uh, technological cities and we are hosting uh, the youth fair and also our, those who are involved in sports and successful can also ho stay here. And even though this is a very new component, we are very bold with this unit. Our main purpose with this unit is to make Kojeli a center for natural sports, for nature sports, sorry. Our nature sports are very prevalent for us, very important for us, and we held a, we held a camp and festival for this recently. And in 2019, World Youth Orienting Tournament, we hosted an international event. And we also have won this year another event, which probably started last week. And you can see different components in nature sports. In our sports schools, we have 128 facilities and 10 different disciplines in 12 different provinces, we would like to provide uh, the youth as much as necessary for what they need in sports. And we also have amateur sport groups and clubs. And by supporting them, we would like to contribute the youth in their endeavors involved in sports. And also with our relevant units, we are conducting uh, tournaments and festivals in different water sports and also biathlon and uh, triathlon uh, turkey competitions, etc. So through these methods, we are trying to get together with the youth. And I don't want to cut uh, too much into your time, into the program's time. This is what I would like to mention. So within the general uh, scope and framework, this is what we do. And we really uh, are uh, trying to get in line with the global standards. That's what I would like to mention so far. Thank you so much. And and here you can see our social media accounts as well, which we are using actively. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Melike, uh, for this quite comprehensive overview. I know it's not easy with the short time we have here, but uh, thanks uh, for, for all the input. Uh, now we will very quickly move on. Before, though, I want to remind our viewers that, uh, or let you know that so far we have not had any questions. So feel encouraged to ask some uh, via the chat if you have questions for later on. And we will try our best to keep it brief so we actually get to a Q&A session after this. Um, okay, next up, um, we will have um, Mohammed Mahli. He's a director of the Islamic Cooperation uh, Youth Forum, which is a new uh, initiative, I understand. The uh, Islamic Cooperation being based in Istanbul also, um, doing some interesting work that he will uh, tell us about. The floor is yours. Thank you. I would like to thank everyone um, and wish everyone a good morning. I would like to point out that I'm very happy to be here uh, in terms of the Marmara municipalities and uh, all the stakeholders 
of uh, this organization. I would like to greet you all on behalf of the uh, Youth Forum of the Islamic uh, Cooperation uh, Organization. It is the only youth organization uh, in the Islamic uh, Cooperation, and, it's, and uh, since 2004, we are active. Our headquarters are in the Republic of Turkey, and uh, uh, we are an active status in, in, in Turkey, autonomic status in Turkey. We have a social and economic projects underway. As you know, uh, these are in line with these sustainable development uh, goals. And uh, we consider ourselves as a pillar of sustainable development in that sense. Uh, of course, we are uh, trying to uh, put into implementation the sustainable development agenda within our own action plan. And uh, as the esteemed uh, speakers also pointed out before me, we are focusing on the principles of the Islamic Coordination uh, Agency. And uh, we are uh, acting. As an organization, we believe that local governments are very important, significant. As the uh, Islamic Cooperation Organization, we have noticed that in spite of all the incentives towards local uh, uh, local governments, there has not been very much activity, and we wanted to support this local diplomacy uh, and create some mobility here. We know that this is a very effective tool in terms of engagement of youth. And as the ICOF, I would like to point out that, uh, especially in countries where there are Muslim minorities, uh, we have the aim of initiating youth engagement. And to get today within the framework of uh, March of 2021, we are in kicking off a project Project Islam uh, Cooperation uh, Youth Forum. Uh, uh, the uh, municipalities. Uh, alliance, so to say, and uh, this will be a kickoff meeting for our project where we have come together with international actors uh, for cooperation, and uh, we were going to have the official launch meeting uh, today, like I said, within the framework of March 2021. ICOF uh, Municipalities Alliances is actually based on a social harmonization and social inclusion project and uh, we in this uh, in this alliance we are actually including youth as actors of this uh, inclusion and as i pointed out we believe that uh, local diplomacy is extremely important within the framework of this uh, project as for the strategy of icof uh, i have to point out that uh, the, we are we have the aim of bringing together all the um, uh, youth organizations of municipalities and Islamic countries together uh, because we believe that uh, the uh, the local governments which are the closest to the population to the citizens are, are playing ex extremely important role in um, engaging the youth in um, many Islamic countries, also in Turkey, uh, we have uh, numerous um, um, committees, youth committees in the municipalities, as well as directorates, uh, youth engagement directors. We want all of these organs and bodies to come together and uh, contribute to the process of peace um, through their activities. So our main objective in that sense is to uh, bring forth best practices and share best practices of all of these examples that we see, of all of the activities that we see, and we want to publish them as well. And maybe once a year, it could be hybrid meetings or um, it could be in person. We want to have um, meetings, uh, advisory meetings, where we want to uh, actually share these uh, best practices with each other. And uh, one more point where we are in common, we also wish uh, and aim for youth to take part in uh, the decision-making mechanisms. And in many of local uh, governments, we do have, at the moment, elected uh, youth committees, and uh, they 
can issue uh, recommendations to the uh, municipality. And this is a great example and opportunity for us to see the youth taking part in the decision-making process instead of um, the uh, elder uh, participants. So, uh, and for municipalities where there are no existing youth committees, we plan to establish them uh, and uh, enable them uh, or and strengthen them, uh, and empower them. And uh, at this point, point, uh, we know that some uh, examples and best cases, which are some local, some international, and some stakeholders who are both local and international. And uh, we have at the m moment um, partners uh, who want to establish 126 uh, local uh, youth committees uh, from various countries, from Iran, and uh, we have a stakeholder with around 600 members. And of course, the Marmor Municipalities Forum is uh, again uh, one of our stakeholders. I would like to uh, state that uh, Marmara. Uh, 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 governments, uh, Marmara uh, Municipalities Union and Turkey Municipalities Union uh, are welcome uh, to also take part in the projects as well, um, and as well as the alliances in the uh, West Sharia as well as other uh, regions as well are, are active members. I would like to briefly also touch upon Palestine. Uh, where we and activities we are carrying out there uh, in Palestine, we have, uh, in spite of the occupation, I emphasize, uh, we have carried out a wonderful work with the young people, engaging the young people. Thank God, we have been able to carry out humane humanitarian aid as well as educational issues. And then in Western Sharia in uh, Jerusalem, in January 2020, uh, we carried out. Uh, program of train the trainer for drug abuse uh, together with uh, the um, Green Crescent uh, organization, Yeshilai organization. And now these trainers trained by us are training the youth there uh, in, in this uh, topic. In uh, Palestine specifically and uh, within the uh, scope of all the countries of the Islamic Cooperation uh, Alliance in general, we will continue our activities. So I would like to hear by in my words. Thank you very much. And uh, also for being on point so much. Uh, on this occasion, I want to remind everyone that we have the ability to ask questions, which so far we have not received. And again, we especially encourage young people to ask questions. And in order to uh, be able to do so later on, we will move on right away. Our next speaker will be Aslahan Chepolo. Uh, she is a strategic management and planning officer at Nilufar Municipality, which uh, I know also does a lot of great work uh, in these fields. So we're very excited to also hear her speak. The floor is yours, Aslahan. Thank you very much, dear moderator. And I would like to extend my gratitude to all the participants and speakers. So first of all, to be able to be a speaker in a youth-oriented forum, that is a great achievement for me, I would like to state that. In the previous presentations, and also in the previous years, we have seen that local governments uh, started to become more oriented towards youth policies. But we cannot, uh, unfortunately, speak about strategic planning all that much. And maybe we can talk about the false perception of what youth really want. There are a lot of different projects designed for the youth by local governments, but are these really in line with the uh, true needs of uh, and also expectations of the youth? We have some question marks in those areas. and. I don't think anyone ha has more expertise in what youth really needs uh, more than the youth. They have different challenges, uh, conflicts, and needs. So to be able to understand these and to be able to come up with the best solutions according to those, we must be able to involve the young people in the process and ask them questions. And in this, the best thing that can be done by the, by the local governments we can actually involve them in the strategic planning processes held uh, each five years 
by the municipalities. And Nilufar in this area, in, in the strategic uh, management and planning bureau, we were uh, constructed with those aims. And we held a collaboration to this end. We held a, uh, we held a meeting in Nulfer, the Genshler Strategy Consure, the Youth Talk Strategy in Nulfer. And the strategic planning and the strategic direction and also the strategic uh, planning model, uh, we talked about those and uh, really realized that this was these were the most important components in the planning part. And all the stakeholders, so orders, and all the so the municipality, uh, people expect uh, all the processes there to be uh, inclusive all throughout, and to be able to reflect the youth perspective in these, to be able to come up with a method there and solution there, we got into research and held a workshop. And we have the participation model for the strategic uh, planning phase. And, the, and we realize we planned to start with a strategic uh, planning uh, work group, or a, a study group, strategic plan study group, to be involved in the youth assemblies. And first of all, it would start with the dissemination and interviews with mayoral candidates and young council member uh, candidates would be held and then they w the elections would be starting and in the last phase on the uh, up most uh, in the highest level of the municipality male and female representative uh, from the council to be uh, representing their uh, groups and to be able to promote and popularized this model internationally, we held a workshop right after this one. And from many different regions with a lot of participants all of, uh, from all of Turkey, we uh, gave them redesigning ideas and how they could uh, redesign this model in their own cities. And we also had a national international report. And in Nilüfer, the this model set in Nilüfer, in the uh, recent uh, planning stage, strategic planning uh, phase, it was applied by the municipality. And when we talk about strategic plans, we must uh, think about all the stages and phases of this plan. So each of these components are crucial for the strategic planning processes. And one of the most important issues is to only get the uh, expectations and the needs, or sorry, the demands of uh, the stakeholders. And if uh, these are not met, then there is uh, dissatisfaction. But if you actually approach these holistically and uh, manage to uh, really address all of these issues, then we can only, uh, we, only then we can really reflect the youth perspective in these pl planning processes. And within our inner planning phases, to be able to define and understand the issues with the young people, it was very important because only through collaboration we can we could come up with the correct strategy. And secondly, we talked about uh, what we wanted to do and how we would like to get there. So the answers to these questions we. Uh, search for them in many different platforms with a lot of different brothers and sisters of ours and in all of these with uh, strategic planning workshops we uh, included the youth committee as well youth council as well and with them we discussed how and what kind of solutions we could develop for them and finally the Nilfer Municipality 2020-2024 strategic plan by including a female and male representative uh, from the council, uh, we really reflected their views and ideas. And to talk, if we talk about the result, the most effective solution we 
that came up through this process was a strategic plan that were that was developed with the youth, uh, youth participation and to be able to uh, increase the youth participation uh, and also the ch children's participation to uh, promote and strengthen the s structure of the society and we had different uh, goals and aims for this five different ones and we went through a planning phase for this one as well. And all of these activities and projects uh, which were to be done with the participation of the youth, they, most of them have already came, uh, come alive. And the uh, follow-up and evaluation process as well. We came up with a body so that they could understand what went uh, like we they wanted uh, them to go and what didn't. So a youth commission uh, was uh, structured and the community council youth assembly uh, was formed and different participants from uh, different groups were involved in the in this. And through different perspectives, they are uh, tracking and also evaluating the process. And as a result of this planning, we came up with basically a design of new Nilufer, with a new generation. And if we are to look into the concept of the new generation, uh, it refers to constructing a such a structure by looking at the world through the eyes of a child, a young person, and taking into account the needs of children and young generations of which are we are partners not only of the future but also of today because looking through the lens of children and also the young people, they are actually uh, members of our society. They are human beings as well. They have their own thoughts and their own feelings. So we must be able to support them in their uh, philosophical and also emotional well-beings and uh, try to get them involved in these processes and we are seeing this coming to fruition greatly so at this point we have uh, at least one uh, question asked so i will quickly move on to our next presenter so we actually get to ask the question in the end it is annegret wart she is an education manager at the municipality of Stuttgart, also from Germany. Very happy to have you on. The floor is yours, Annegret. Okay. Yeah, good morning to all of you. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. I've been working uh, on the topic of youth uh, with Turkey before, so um, I'm very excited to have the chance also to reconnect and to listen um, yeah, to all these interesting and best, best practices from your municipality. So um, from my side, uh, I would like uh, to focus on the topic of youth participation. We have heard about uh, youth services, but for me, I will look at uh, youth participation and first make a general remark and then give one example from Stuttgart municipality, which is a youth friendly city and it's the topic of the children assembly. So from um, the perspective of a local government, I think there are many approaches uh, to youth participation. As uh, Mr. Octay already stated before, youth is heterogeneous and I think we don't have only one participation format for all. Um, we, we have, yeah, for different youth, we need different formats. So, of course, like one important thing would be to include youth perspectives in decision-making uh, processes. But I think also that, that this is a very challenging format and it's not for every kind of youth because decision-making and strategic planning, it's like it always has a long time horizon. And if young people participate, they might not um, uh, yeah, get a hold of the results because they have already moved on and it's also more young people participating to the uh, adult life and being young po politi politicians so for some young people it might be also boring but it is one uh, important aspect but an another important aspect from my perspective would also be um, like contacting or creating participatory pro uh, projects in everyday life spaces of young people, which would be in the neighborhoods 
or at schools or at youth centers, uh, at sports facilities where young people are and where young people can create their own projects. And they also would, yeah, then in this way, it's also easier for to create maybe spaces or experiences of self-efficiency, of empowerment for young people to see, I can have a word, I can also, yeah, I have, I have the possibility to, to change uh, my environment. I think there's also a very nice example from Turkey. Um, it's the project Youth Bank, Genç Bank, which has been conducted within the last decades. Um, yeah, and thirdly, sometimes maybe, yeah, youth participation could also um, be only pr provide access and um, possibility for young people, because I think not every young people has the means maybe even to yeah, express their own demands. I, I'm thinking of um, yeah, young migrant youth or refugee youth coming to Germany, coming to Stuttgart. For them, it's maybe first much more important like to explore the city, to, to find their way into a, uh, education and yeah, to pro provide the space before we ask them uh, to, um, dem uh, yeah, to ask demands. So, um, yeah, that's for the general remarks. Um, I move on to explain one part of the um, yeah, you, uh, children's friendly city structure of Stuttgart. So uh, we have a children's office, which is uh, connected to the mayor's office. Uh, and this also shows that uh, yeah, the city gives importance to children's um, yeah, participation and their aim is yeah, to mainstream youth and children participation throughout the whole uh, administration. And we have the structure that uh, each uh, the directorate and department has a children officer. So one person who is um, yeah, responsible to bring in a, like children uh, uh, perspective and be accountable. So we have uh, children officers at uh, the forestry directorate, the waste uh, di directorate, at youth services. So any kind of directorate you can imagine. And every year um, the children's office is organizing the children's assembly. And I think it's a very good example to link maybe policy making, but also to like co concrete uh, neighborhood experiences. So what uh, the children office does is like uh, every year they conduct a, a survey uh, amongst children to decide for one topic the children would like to tackle. So and, and the topics like they're um, according to the children's rights charter. So this year for instance in, in Germany, uh, in Stuttgart, uh, around 3000 children uh, choose the topic nature and environment. And so um, the children's office invite, uh, yeah, hands out invitations uh, to schools, to youth centers, to associations, like throughout the whole city, and invites um, children uh, from the age of nine to 10. So it's like third and fourth grade to form a, a, a children's groups of young people who are accompanied by one adult person. It can be a teacher, it can be a youth worker. And they are invited to choose their own topic uh, related to nature and environment. So, and they're asked to prepare their own projects. So what could they do within their schools or in their environment? But they're also asked to, um, to develop claims and demands uh, to uh, the municipality. So they made um, yeah, one children group uh, might tackle the uh, topic of, um, of waste, they could make their own project of collecting waste, but they could also make a given demand to the municipality to tell, to uh, yeah, so to make the neighborhoods cleaner. And so these letters, they then are referred to the children's officers in the respective um, directorates. And uh, they're obliged, so every directorate is then obliged to work with this claim and also give a response to the children. So in some cases, the claims might be um, successful and the municipality uh, can even yeah, 
react and, and change something in the, uh, the environment of the children. In some cases, we know <laughs> the bureaucracy is uh, sometimes also challenging. It's, it's not possible, but at least the, the municipality will react and it will also explain why some claims maybe are not possible to realize. And I think that's a very good example to have like, yeah, actions which are in the, uh, in the neighborhood, they're close to the livelihoods of young people, but they also have a connection to the administration structure. And yeah, so um, maybe to sum up, uh, yeah, as we all know, participation is important, but it's also really important to create um, yeah, governance structures who then, um, yeah, enable like these uh, different kinds of processes. Um, yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And I give back to the moderator. Thank you, Annegret. And I will not try and wrap up this session since we have so little time. I would like to use the remaining minute we have actually for one question for Melika Hanem. And, and the rest of all the questions, send them via email. There's one more question and I will promise to forward them to the speakers. The question for Melike Hanem is? For uh, youth in Kojele, are you creating areas of employment or not? Uh, the question is whether you have created areas of employment for youth in Kojele. So I would like to point out here in answer to that uh, in, in Kojele, after graduation from universities, uh, we ask our youth to have developed at least one uh, hobby. Um, the rest of the conference. Thank you. Okay,